Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jim Dice, and I am the registered nurse, and along with my wife Dawn Dice, we're the owners of Twin Oaks Home Care. Welcome to the uh, 2017 Spring Mandatory Staff Meeting. Uh, there are 10 areas that we're going to cover today. Uh, the first area we have to cover spring and fall, and that is the uh, just policy review. And as you know, there are some employees that have been with us for years. There are some that have just recently been with us, and they're going to be watching this DVD as well. Uh, we have to make sure that every employee is on the same page. So policy review is important for uh, the newer employees. Uh, for the older employees, it's just... Uh, a basic review of something that you're already doing. Um, the right way and the wrong way uh, of things. You should have an agenda dated 4-1-17. Um, a is our call-offs. Uh, this hasn't changed in 16 years we've been doing this. Our office requires an eight-hour notice and what that does is it gives us time to be able to stay dependable to find uh, a replacement if someone does have to call off. Uh, just a reminder, get your excuse into our office within three business days. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, nowadays, they can email the excuse over or they can send the text message of a picture over to our office. Uh, it doesn't have to be the U.S. Postal Service anymore. Uh, letter B, special requests. Uh, this is something that's in place to help things run smoothly. Just make sure that if you need to have a specific day off, that you get the uh, special request into our office dur during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., 14 days in advance. Anything less than 14 days, we can't guarantee it, but 90% of the time we're able to f uh, find another employee that would be flexible enough to help cover those shifts. And for those employees out there that have been flexible covering shifts, um, thank you, Don, and I appreciate everything that you are doing to help us stay uh, the best home care agency in southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, summer's coming, so if you're going to be taking a vacation, a special request are for a specific seven-day period, such as a Sunday to Saturday or s any seven days that you would uh, require. Um, the other thing is we do have some 24-hour cases that are going on right now. And I'm not going to grant two or three employees the same week off whenever there's only six employees that go to that house. Basically, it's one employee per house per special request. And those have to be granted, uh, approved by the uh, office administration, myself or by Dawn. Um, letter C. When we're placing calls out, communication is one of the most important things in our company. Uh, we expect a call or a text or... or something within a two-hour time frame. That's very important because a lot of times there's questions that we have that we need to answer quickly, especially when we're dealing with patients' health or changes in their health status. So call us back promptly. Uh, you are required to have a voicemail or an answering machine. That way I don't have to keep calling you all day. I can call, leave one message, and you get back to us as soon as you get that. Uh, letter D. A patient's on the floor. This policy hasn't changed. Just a reminder. Our employees are not permitted to pick a patient up off the floor. If that happens, it's a $200 fine. No questions asked, whether you get hurt or not. Um, the family can pick them up. The ambulance can come, which would be the better option. They can assess the patient, and then they can actually get the patient up and make sure that there's no neurological changes, make sure there's nothing broken. Letter E, incident reports. Uh, that's an unusual circumstance that happens in the home, um, either uh, an an injury or uh, to the client or to an employee or just something that's not normal in the home uh, whether there's a lack of uh, cleaning supplies or lack of food or, or anything along that line uh, you would report that to the office uh, we would document that and then we would follow up with the appropriate people sometimes we have to follow up with the family the doctor's office the care managers adult protective services um, or even children and youth services if someone under the age of 18 is involved. Letter F, our cell phone policy. Your cell phones, I haven't had any complaints recently, but just as a reminder, cell phones are to be off when you're in a patient's home. 
you're getting paid to be there to help them, and you're not getting paid to uh, be on your phone and uh, be texting or surfing the web or uh, making phone calls during your regularly scheduled shift. Um, there are times when employees will take a break. Uh, if it's less than a four-hour shift, you are entitled to a 15-minute break, and as long as your patient is safe. If uh, it is longer than a four-hour shift, you're entitled to 30 minutes of break time. That's when you can turn your phone on, check your messages, make any calls you need to make. Um, just as a reminder, it's not in your note here, uh, employees that are at patients' homes and the employee smokes, make sure the patient's safe, go outside, take a little uh, plastic bottle to put your cigarette butts in, don't throw them in the patient's yard, and then wash your hands when you come back in. You don't want that smell. Uh, a lot of the patients and families don't appreciate that smell, especially if they don't smoke. Uh, letter G. Employee schedules. Our schedules run Friday to Thursday. We're going to be calling over 100 employees on Wednesday. So that means don't call in on Wednesday unless we specifically asked you to. Um, you are permitted to call in on Thursdays to get your schedule if you don't have it by Thursday because you may be scheduled the next day Friday that starts our work week. Um, light housekeeping. Uh, next to safety, this is the number two of importance. I've had some complaints that come in lately where the patient's family member says, you know, Twin Oaks employee comes here and they just sit the whole shift. They don't do anything. Well, that should never be the case. All you have to do is look around, look at the care plan. Uh, every patient requires light housekeeping. Uh, unless it specifically says they have their own housekeeper that comes, we don't do it, and that will be marked on their paperwork. Um, we are allowed to uh, do dishes, vacuum, dust, damp mop, uh, sweep, um, change bed linens once a week, make the bed every day, and take out the trash every shift. Uh, once a week I like to do the kitchen really good, and once a week I like to do the, get the bathroom done uh, very well. You should be using some type of a bleach cleaner in the bathroom to kill bacteria. We are not permitted to get on our hands and knees to clean. We are not permitted to stand on anything to clean. And we are not permitted to move any heavy furniture. If they request those things of you, you say, you know what, I'm not sure, let me check, let's call the office. And when you call the office, that takes the problem, puts it in our hands, and then it's between us and the patient and family, not you and the patient and family, because you have to have a continued good relationship, working relationship, to be able to stay in that home and provide those services. Uh, letter I, clear care. Uh, we've been doing this for almost a year and a half now. Uh, you must clock in and out. It's a toll-free number. We still have a habitual four or five employees that, for whatever reason, can't clock in and out correctly. Um, there are penalties that are in place for that. Those are being enforced. And it's my goal that 100% of employees will be clocking in and out correctly. If there's a problem when you go to clock in or out, all you have to do is call the office, and we can do it manually, but that should be far and few between because that takes my secretary's time away from scheduling, billing, payroll, filing, and those types of issues that need to take place. Uh, letter J, transporting clients. Just remember this, um, any client that is a the veteran, uh, we're in there and the VA is paying for us to be in there, we are not permitted to transport them at all. You can go to the store and come back for them, but you are not permitted to put them in your vehicle. Any of the other pay sources, like the options program, the waiver program, private pay, uh, private insurances, we are permitted to transport. If you are at a home and you aren't sure, all you have to do is call us and we will uh, let you know what direction you should go in, in each individual situation. Um, you also have to call the office before you leave the house and call the office when you get back, whether you're going to the store or whether you're transporting a patient. And uh, that transporting a client has to be approved by myself. Uh, there are times when people want to get out, but it's not safe for them to get out, and I won't approve that. I don't want my employees getting hurt trying to get someone in and out of a vehicle, and I don't want my employees hurting someone trying to get them in and out of a vehicle. Number two, home care safety. Uh, that's the number one priority for clients and for employees. We're there to protect them, but you have to keep in the back of your mind, you're there to protect yourself. And it's been almost a year since we've had an employee injury. It's our goal that every year there would be zero patient injuries. 
uh, letter A, hand washing. Uh, it says frequently, but uh, we've covered this in the past. It's before meals, after toileting. Uh, if you cough or sneeze or if you touch your face, you should wash your hands. Um, if you toilet, you know, you go to the bathroom yourself, you should wash your hands. Um, and then if you're going to help someone with a wound, if they have a skin tear, we're putting Neosporin and a Band-Aid on it, you should wash your hands before, and then you should wash your hands afterwards. That way you're not taking anything with you. You should also wash your hands as soon as you walk into a patient's house, and you should wash your hands right before you leave so that you, again, don't take anything home with you. Letter B, uh, principles of body mechanics. If you don't correctly lift or move or... Uh, uh, perform your job in a specific way, if you don't do it correctly, then you are putting yourself at risk for injuring yourself. Uh, things that you sh need to carry that may be a little bit heavy might be a laundry basket, especially if you're carrying the laundry detergent in it with it back and forth to a laundromat. Um, you want to make sure that you're erect in your posture, that when you are bending over to pick something up, you're not bending at the waist, that you're actually bending at the knees. Um, put something on a chair if you're going to load it and lift it instead of putting it on the floor. Um, push rather than pull and if you're going to slide a patient up in bed, not all of our patients are bed fast, but for the ones that are, you want to use a draw sheet and you want to get at the head of the bed, elevate the foot of the bed and when you pull underneath their shoulders, have them push with their feet and that way they're coming downhill towards you that, that's going to prevent those injuries in your side and back and shoulder area that uh, we've seen in the past. Uh, letter C under safety is fire and electrical safety. Uh, in every patient's home there's a little blue book it's called home safety and that covers fall prevention, it covers fire safety, and it covers safety with medications. Those are the three things you could put a patient back in the hospital rather quickly. Under fire, if there's a bad receptacle in the home, you want to make sure that you let us know about it. You've got to plug something in and it sparks. You can see uh, bare cords in receptacles or in plugs um, if something's frayed. Or if there's, you know, 20 things plugged into one outlet. Uh, those types of things will cause a fire in a patient's home. That should be brought to our attention. We can do certain things to prevent that from happening rather than, you know, there's now a fire in a patient's house, we're getting them outside, and then the fire company shows up, and now the patient has to rebuild their house through their insurance company. Uh, if we can prevent that, that's our job. Uh, letter E, um, mandatory reporting. Uh, most of you have already uh, been aware of this. We do talk about this at orientation as well. We are mandatory reporters of abuse and neglect whether it's an elderly person or whether it's a child. Any abuse and neglect, uh, there's two ways you can go about it. We are going to present you with a lengthy handout today. Uh, you can either call Adult Protective Services or Children Youth Services yourself and you can uh, anonymously file reports. Or you can bring it to our attention here to the management or at the office and we can actually assist you in that process. And that way we're aware of it and we can keep an eye on it. And we can also let the other employees in that home know, hey, you need to be keeping out for these symptoms. And those symptoms are listed in that handout. Bruising, uh, burn marks, uh, missing money from accounts. You know, it could be financial abuse. It could be sexual abuse. Uh, it doesn't always have to be physical abuse. There's all different types. Um, it could also be um, verbal abuse. Uh, there's situations we've had to deal with as well. Um, so please, you know, take time, look over that handout. It's a presentation that came down from Harrisburg. There's a lot of good information in that. Uh, number three, emergency preparedness. That's something that's now mandatory uh, for Medicare and Medicaid providers in the state of Pennsylvania. There are five sections here, A, B, C, and D, under the emergency preparedness. And basically what they're talking about is disasters if there's a, a terrible storm that would come through or a um, terrorist threat like a bomb threat or a bomb actually did go off or a train would crash when you would have injuries to multiple people potential um, 
how is the healthcare community going to come together and meet the needs of the citizens during that crisis? Uh, it could also be a, a widespread flu epidemic or a, a Zika epidemic, uh, which is occurring more in the southern states across the southern borders. Um, here are some of the requirements that our company has to have. I just want you to be aware of them, and we do have all of these in place. Uh, letter A is an emergency plan. Uh, there are emergency plans for fire, for uh, difficult storms like um, a really bad snow or ice storm or a thunderstorm where there's power outages. Um, we give every patient an emer emergency preparedness guidebook uh, on admission, and that covers basically they're supposed to have three days' worth of food, water, and medicine at all times. And with our weather forecasting today as compared to even 20, 30 years ago, people know when bad storms are coming. They can actually stock up on those things ahead of time. Um, letter B, policies and procedures. Uh, our policy book is a thousand pages long. Uh, it's something that I have to review every year. And uh, there are policies in place, such as the snow day policy, where we can either cancel shifts, move shifts, um, we can uh, shorten shifts. Uh, we try to get patients, uh, employees home and off the road when we know bad weather's coming. Uh, we put the snow day policy in effect. For patients that are extremely vulnerable, we and the employee doesn't have a four-wheel drive vehicle or a, a friend or family member with a four-wheel drive vehicle to get them there, we have not only myself but volunteers with four-wheel drive vehicles that will get those employees to the most vulnerable patients. And out of the 100 and 20 clients that we're serving right now, there's probably only about three or four that we would consider the most vulnerable. They don't have any family, they're diabetics, some of them are bed fast, they, they, um, they live alone, and they require us to be there seven days a week. So it's, those are patients that we cannot let leave unattended. Uh, letter C, communication plan. Not just back and forth to our employees, but back and forth to other local health care um, FEMA, Red Cross, uh, local hospitals, uh, there is a communication plan in place. Um, and one of the best things that we have now through our clear care system is the ability to mass email and mass text every employee the same thing. So if there's an emergency or there's a disaster, we can email every employee or text message every employee at one time and notify you of what we need to happen. So um, our Twin Oaks office, unless it is the site of a disaster, would be the actual command post. Uh, we also are required to have letter E, I'm going to jump down one, uh, an emergency power system in place in case something would happen to the power here at the office. I do have a backup generator. It is not kept on site here. Uh, it would be brought here and the fuel for the backup generator is also kept off site. So we can still function, even if there's a power outage here at my office. We can have a generator here, we can plug our computers into it. We have phones that are landline phones, we have cell phones, um, phones that we can plug in that aren't battery powered, uh, it's powered straight through the phone system. So all of those are in place just in case something like that would happen. Um, and then let's back up to letter D, training and testing. Um, there will be training, there will be testing additional. Uh, there is our annual testing that will include emergency preparedness guidelines, part of our training here today. Um, there is a handout that you're going to get today, the same handout that we hand pati to patients and families. I want you to look through that. There's a nice list of things that you should have and even employees should have in case there is a, an emergency um, in your area where you live. Number four, uh, a fire safety plan. Uh, there is a fire safety plan in effect for our office. There are maps that are posted. There are fire extinguishers here at our office. There are smoke detectors here at our office. Um, and there's a plan. If there was a fire, there's exit signs uh, to allow people to know this is how to get out of here. But when you're working in a patient's home, you have to be aware of where your exits are at. You also have to be aware of whether or not there's a smoke detector in that patient's home. And we do recommend that. If a patient doesn't have a smoke detector, we contact their local fire department, and normally they'll put one in the patient's home for free. 
Uh, they may or may not have a smoke detector. Smoke detector, I'm sorry, fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers are around $20. They have to make sure that it's a multi-purpose one, ABC one, uh, that'll cover grease as long as as well as wood or paper materials. Um, if you're at a client's home, there is a fire. You know, the best thing to do is to get them out safely. If they can't ambulate their bed fast, you want to put a sheet on the floor, ease them to the floor, and pull the sheet outside to where they are safe. Um, number five, calling the office. This hasn't changed in 16 years. You are always to call line one, which is 438-1936. Um, if you uh, have a cell phone and you're calling in, don't use the toll-free number because cell phones are are uh, free to call even if you live in a different county you can call the 438-1936 that's a number to plug into your telephone telephone because when we leave here every night we take that 438-1936 number and we transfer it to a cell phone and we take that with us so if you need us after hours you can reach us um, also do not call back on any of those other numbers after hours because it's going to call here in the office and just ring and no one's going to be here to answer it always call 438-1936 number six we have the sexual harassment policy this is something that our insurance requires for us to cover on an annual basis so I'm gonna read it word for word you have a copy of this to take with you also if there's ever any issues you need to bring that to our attention immediately whether it's from a coworker, whether it's from a patient or whether it's from a patient's family member it states no form of sexual harassment is tolerated by Twin Oaks Home Care. This includes physical and verbal sexual harassment as well as sexual innuendos and tasteless or immoral jokes from employees, clients, or their family members. Twin Oaks will follow the disciplinary process if an employee is involved in an incident. And depending on the severity of the infraction, termination may be immediate. Disciplinary actions will be determined by the Twin Oaks Home Care Management. Next, number seven, Twin Oaks website. Um, we still have a website. It's up and running. There is some good information on there. If you have any friends that are looking for a job, that's the best place to send them to. It is TwinOaksHomeCare.com. And um, for every person that you refer to us, there is a $100 referral bonus. We, that's something we don't track. You must track that, that $100 would be uh, given to the employee the uh, new employee has to be employed for six months and the employee that referred them has to still be with us with us in six months for that to actually take effect uh, number eight employee schedules um, we talked about this earlier please don't call into the office on Wednesdays unless you're asked to do so Thursdays between eight and four if you haven't received your schedule please call us and number nine, employee 2017 pay calendar. We did send all of those out earlier uh, at the beginning of the year. We are going to include another one just in case you misplaced it. Uh, but it's important to know the exact days that your pay is going to take place. Also, um, in conclusion, we have uh, the insurance review. We do offer the AFLAC insurance to employees here. It's something that I have, my, have for my family members. Um, it's been very beneficial to the employees that have it. It's a reimbursement type program where you would actually go to the doctor, go to the hospital, you would pay for that, and then you would submit the claim to AFLAC, and within two to three days, you have that money reimbursed back to you. It's an excellent program. It's very inexpensive. It's only a couple dollars a pay, and uh, there are several different types of plans that are available to employees. Um, what I require is that an employee has been with us for at least three months and they can go ahead and um, uh, let us know that they're interested and we can sign them up for this type of an insurance. So that concludes what I have for you today, uh, the spring 2017 mandatory staff meeting. Um, if you have any questions, please see us or call the office. If you need to speak to us, uh, we can uh, if we don't know the answer, we can find it out for you. Um, our office uh, hasn't ever been busier before in 16 years. Uh, what's happening now is that we're getting so many phone calls. There's so much of a need for help 
in southwestern Pennsylvania that were actually turning down three to five cases every week. Um, and that's not my goal to turn business away, but uh, we have to provide a quality service. We have to stay dependable to our employees to, and to our clients. We have to um, provide safety when we're there in the homes. Uh, we have to um, maintain a clean and healthy environment whenever we're there in the homes. And if there's changes in the patient's physical or mental condition, we have to make sure that we're taking the appropriate steps, which is letting us know, letting the family know, so that we can get a hold of the right people, get a hold of the doctors, get a hold of the skilled nurses, uh, get a hold of the care managers. They may just need, you know, an increase in their time uh, if they're not feeling well. You know, we just came through a really bad season of bad 